Welcome to the prophets. Do you want to know what's coming next? Find out what God is doing. We will be hearing what God is saying in this season. Now, your host, Apostle Jason Leopard. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Thank you, thank you. Uh, glad to be back with you guys. God has been speaking to me some things. So uh, today on the prophets, we are um, we are going to get in some real interesting things today. Okay, um, just know, guys, um, uh, we are coming up with a, a um, outreach motorcycle uh, group. Uh, we're still in the process of doing that. And we're also in the process of building a table, going live. These are some of the things that, that are coming. Uh, we're going to be live on YouTube, Facebook, and all that good stuff. So if you enjoy our podcast, you enjoy our 24-hour radio station, you also enjoy uh, us being live on Wednesday and Sundays, okay? Okay. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, we're going to be talking about the order of God. And that's what I'm going to title this today, the order of God. And if we're not in this order, guys, we're out of order. Okay? We're out of order. I'm going to say that one more time. I used to think I could ordain anybody in the ministry. I I, I thought I could ordain anyone in the ministry, but come to find out you can't do that and the reason why is because people don't have character they might have a gift but they don't have the character to bring out their gift you got to understand jesus had all kind of gifts but he had to be tested to see if he had the character to bring what god has put in him out see that's it's good that you start good but if you can't finish it, what good is it? Come on. He started a good work in you, and he'll finish a good work. But you got to be able to stand that good work, and it takes character. That's what it takes. It takes character in God. I want to. I'm going to. I'm going to uh, read to you the Titus. We're coming from the book of Titus in the New Testament, in chapter one. It says Paul. Now listen to what this says right off the bat. And that's what I want to explain to you about. If we don't get in order, church, then we're out of order. I'm telling you. And it's all by obedience. Now sometimes we don't like obeying our boss or our, 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 our godly leaders, our pastors. We don't like that. We don't like being told what to do when we see that it's unfair. But it's still the order of God whether it's unfair or not. Watch this. Paul, a servant of God. Now, first of all, you can't have a relationship with God unless you become a servant. An apostle of Jesus. So you see those two passages. No, my friend, Jesus is not God. They're two different individuals. Right there shows you. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. So they're two different individuals. Quit going around with this false doctrine telling people Jesus is God. Come on, man. That's hypocrisy. Hypocrisy has been taught in the church. You got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now let's go on. We're not we're not going to dig too much into that today. According to the faith of God's elect, and the knowledge of the truth, which is out uh, after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, 
but he is in due times manifest in the word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Lord, uh, our Savior. To Titus, my own son, after common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There's that word. Two different times. They're two different individuals, guys. Now listen to what he says. For the cause left to then create, thou shouldest set in order. There he goes with that order again. For this cause left I thee and create thou should set in order the things that are wanting, waiting, and ordained elders in every city. Now, you can't ordain elders in every city. <laughs> you got to know their character. As I have appointed thee, and if thou be blameless and husband of one wife. Now, that don't mean, guys, that you can't be an elder because you've been divorced before. That don't have nothing to do. He don't want you unruly and have two or three wives, four wives. That shows that you are unruly and you're not worthy. You you cannot contain the character God is supposed to put you in the position for. See what I'm saying? Because you'll be sleeping with every woman in the church. Come on. Come on. It don't mean that you've got a divorce, that you can't be a pastor. See, that's false doctrine too. It just means if you have four or five women, you have an uh, elect to go sleep with everybody in the church. Come on. But if you have one wife, that don't mean that you're a whoremonger and you're going to sleep with everybody in the church because you got a divorce. You don't know why I got a divorce, first of all. So we won't get in too far of that. Uh, you know where I stand with that. Okay, lest the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot and unruly. Now, I'm going to say something here. Sometimes when you do go through a divorce, what causes kids to act up and be unruly is, is, is because they have a divorce and the other parent is leading them the other direction. Now, that's going to cause problems. It is. It's going to cause problems. Having faithful children not accused or right or unruly. Otherwise, they can't be unruly. They got to be well behaved. That don't mean they go up at their mama's house and do what they want to do. See, when you're divorced, that's what you. That's what happens to you. They go over to other parties' house and they do what they want to do, and then they come back to your house and they know the rules. But just because they act that way over at somebody else's house don't mean they're going to act that way at your house. See, you got to set a standard. That's what that's meaning, unruly. means they obey you. You don't put up with no bull crap. You set the rules. You set the standards of your home. And if you see this, they're not an elder yet. They need some more work. Because you gotta, you got to know one thing, guys. If you're going to go on a call and if you're going to go in ministry, you can't you you can't let family rule over you, even your children. And quit giving in to them. Quit letting them get peers and, and tattoos and all this stuff. That's a form of rebelliousness and you know it. My God. If any be blameless of husband and one wife, having faithful children, not accused of right and unruly. For a bishop must be blameless and the steward of God. The steward of God. Otherwise, God can trust him. Not self-willed, not angry, not soon to angry, nor given to wine, nor stricker, nor given to filthy lucre. Filthy lucre means he's running towards the money. Come on, you can't be that way. You got to watch some of these people. <laughs> you got to watch them. How do you know they're going to do that? Until you put the money in their hand. Come on, somebody. Money will change people quick. So you got to watch people. That's why I don't ordain people in the ministry no more. I don't. I used to. I ordained one guy. I'll never do it again. I watch them, 
I watch how they live their life. Because how how you gonna know how you gonna know if a person is ready for that calling when you see these signs right here that Titus has given us? Be careful, guys. Be careful. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good man, sober, just, holy tempered, holding the fast of a faithful word, holding fast the faithful word as it has been taught. Otherwise, they're not one way one one day and another day next. They done heard a new doctrine. <laughs> they stand fast to what God has taught them. Watch signs for this stuff, guys. Be lovers of hospitality, lovers of good man, sober, just, holy, temperate, just and holy in temperance, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, he has been able to sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince of gainsayers. For this is a many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially them that are circumcised. What is Titus talking about right here? He's talking about the people in the church whose mouths can whose mouths must be stopped, who suffer who holds a whole houses, teaching they things which are not but filthy lucre for filthy lucre sake. Otherwise they trying to get the money. They letting you hear what you want to hear because they want your money. That's what they're saying for filthy lucre's sake. Otherwise, these people won't preach the truth because they lose tithers. I've seen pastors do this. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the circum always liars, evil boasters, slow, slow bellies. The witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply and may that they may be sound in the faith. Not giving heed to Jewish fables, commandments of men, and turn that turn from the truth. Watch this, guys. Watch this. Unto pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But in their mind content and defiled, and they profess, watch this, guys, they profess that they know God, but in their works they deny him, being a born a nation. And disobedient unto all good works, a reprobate. What is a reprobate? Somebody that's denying the truth and denying correction. He's got a reprobate mind. They're not going to listen. One thing that I see, people have a lot, they're disobedient. Number one, they're disobedient to their parents. Number two, they're disobedient to authority. They're disobedient to their boss at work. When their boss says, come in at 7, you come in at 9, you come in at 10, 12, 30, uh, 1 o'clock. Come on, guys. We, we see this rebellion. We see this. And you think I'm going to ordain you as an elder? He was telling Titus to go in the city and ordain elders. But you can't ordain elders when they're a child still. An elder means a full-grown person that is ready to do God's will. It's not just an elder that goes into the church. See, God had to get me ready. He's still working on me. He's still pruning me. He's still getting me ready for my destiny. But you're not at your destiny yet because you got a lot to learn. And the only way to learn it is make decisions if you're going to start doing it or not. See, you can be stuck somewhere for the rest of your life and never grow up in God. Come on, guys, I'm serious. Growing in God takes decision. Paul said it well. Who are you going to serve? 
this day who you may serve. Who are you going to decide to serve? You're going to have to make decisions in your life and quit doing these things or you're never going to grow up and you're never going to walk in the destiny that God has for you. See, we got to realize something, guys. We're going to be stuck somewhere and always be there. You will never reach your destiny until you start making decisions to change the course of your life. I'm going to make up my mind. I'm going to be at work on time. I'm going to make up my mind when my boss tells me to do something. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm just going to do it. I know I struggle with this. Guys, we got to get on board or we're going to be off board. I'm for real. Watch what he says in uh, chapter two, guys, in Titus. But speak thou the things which, speak thou the things, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the edge man be sober, grave, temperance, sound in the faith, in charity and in patience. Age women likewise, they become behavior. Watch this, guys. Watch this. You want to see something? Watch this. Watch this. The age women, likewise, otherwise he's talking about grown women, they be behavior become holiness, not false accusers. Otherwise, women, you need to shut your mouth. Quit gossiping about people. That's all you do. You're the biggest gossiper on the phone. And false accusers, too. Don't even know what you're talking about. You know you can false accuse somebody and hear somebody else say something about somebody, and you know that becomes false accusing? Because you didn't see it. You just delayed a message what you've heard. Quit. My God, women got more time to get on the phone and start gossiping than anything else. I, I, I ain't lying. You get a bunch of women together, all you're going to do, well, such and such said this. Such. Shut up. Talk about something wholesome instead of talking about people. See, likewise, women likewise be behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And what, what does this mean, love their children? Loving your child is disciplining. God loves who he chastens. If you love that child, then you'll discipline them and show them obedience. Because you know what? If you don't, the authorities will. You don't love your child if you don't discipline them. I'm sorry. My grandpa was a firm believer in disciplining. You don't love your child. You let your child get by with murder. You you know what? You you let them get by. You, you tell them to do this, and you don't do nothing about it. Then you don't love them. I'm sorry. You don't love them. Love their husbands and love their children to be discreet, chast, and keepers at home. Good. And that don't mean, ladies, you don't you 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 go home, wash the boob tube, and don't work. Let me tell you something. That don't mean that. That means keepers at home. That lady, that child needs to know how to fold clothes. That child needs to know how to wash dishes. That child needs to know how to clean home. And you know what? Even go out and cut the grass if needed. I don't care. Because one day she she or he's going to be with her spouse and they're going to be lazy sitting up on a Game Boy. Throw the Game Boy outside. Keepers at home, good and obedient. Watch this. Good and obedient to their own husbands. You need to teach your children to be obedient to them that are over them. If you don't, you're going to create a devil. 
And when you wait to this too late, when they get at a certain age, it's going to be too late. You better get a hand on it now. Don't say you're going to do it. Just do it. Well, she's my best friend, and I, I don't want her to hate me. They're going to hate you anyways. It's your job and your duty, God. Put that child in your hands to mold it and make it. My God. Be obedient to God. Study your child. Lord, have mercy. Obedient to your own husbands, that the word of God not be black, not be blasphemed. Young man, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, show thyself a pattern of good works and of doctors showing uncorruptedness, graviness, and sincerity, sound speech, and cannot be condemned. And then that the contrary part be ashamed, having no evil things to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient to their own masters. That exhort means encourage them to please them well in all things. Not answering again, not prolonging, but showing all good feebleness that they may adorn in doctrine and good and our uh, Savior and our God our Savior in all things. Listen what Titus says right here, guys. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation unto appear to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world looking for the blessed hope and glorious in appearing of that great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, purified unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of what? Good works. These things speak and exhort, rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Watch this, guys. I'm going to read chapter 3 to you, and then we're going to be done, okay? But listen, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain something to you. Don't let your children become your God. God gave you them children, but don't let them become your God. I've seen some people deny God just over their children. Come on, man. You're going to be disobedient to God just to please your child? My God, y'all need some help. Y'all need some help because you don't love the Lord thy God. You don't love God. Don't tell me you love God. You love what God has gave you more. Listen, I got a Harley out there. I got a new truck. I got a house. I got a wife. I got children. But let me tell you something. I love God with all my heart, and there's nothing. I said nothing going to come between me and him, even a child. even an, It don't matter what it is. He gave me these things to entrust to me. Y'all put everything under the sun. You don't even give your tithes half the time. Must you? You hop in here for marriage. You you you're more married to IHOP than you are God God hop or the church hop and call yourself a call yourself a prophet and all this stuff. Apostles. Uh, let me tell y'all something. Y'all need to repent because you ain't going nowhere fast. I don't care. I don't care what. I don't care if God comes in your room and you see him in your room. I don't care. Yeah, I don't order. Put them in mind, be subject unto principalities and powers to, o, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. I'm going to read that one more time. Put them in mind to be subject to uh, principalities and powers to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Watch this, guys. To speak evil, to speak evil of no man. To be brawl, not to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish and disobedient. <laughs> so we was there too. We was there, guys. Deceived. Watch this. Deceived. 
serving drivers of lust and pleasure, living in malice and envy, hateful. My God, I've seen some hateful Christians you ever seen in your life. They so hateful, they don't even know how to talk nice. <laughs> they hateful, hating one another. You know, last next time I see a Christian, and I know they go to church, and I, I've seen their life, and they're rude to me. I'm going to walk up to them and say, you know what? You need to get that hate out of your heart. You need to get the hate out of your heart. Talking about you love God. I don't know. You must love God, but God don't hate. He loves. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which you had shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying that these things that I will affirm constantly that which believe in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto all men, but avoid foolishness, questions, my God, and generously contentions and striving about the law for they are unprofitable and in vain. But a man that is a heretic, after the first and second abomination, reject. Otherwise, a heretic is, they're, they're stuck in their ways. They're, they're, you know, they're stuck in the ways. And I'm going to give you an example right here, guys. I want to give you this example. Um, I'm going to show you something. Show you something I read earlier. Uh, hold on, guys. I just messed it up. I did that earlier. Um, let's go to Titus. Titus chapter 3. Uh, I want to show you guys something right quick. Bear with me. We're going to go back to uh, heretic right here. And that word just really come to me earlier. Well, if I can get this thing to work. Okay, here we go. Here we go, guys. Okay, here we go. Well, I thought so. Hold on. For this must be a hair seeds among you that they which approve or manifest among you. Okay, Second Peter. Uh, but a pro false prophets are among the people which shall false teachers among you. And this is in Second uh, Peter two two one. Uh, who previously shall bring in damnation heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and upon themselves swift destruction. Okay. And they were something else around here that I wanted to read too. Hold on, guys. Let me see this thing. Okay, guys. Just give me a minute. Anyways, um, I can't find it right now. But a heretic is somebody that's just stuck in their doctrine and, and won't go nowhere. I'm trying to find that. Um, anyways, he will not go nowhere because he's a heretic. He is stuck in a way. Um, he's stuck in a form of a doctrine that he's not going to move. So he's a heretic. That's what heretic means. After the first and second reject, he's telling you to reject it. 
and I was trying to find I was trying to find guys um a while ago what I read knowing that such is sober give me this okay let me let me go to this oh that's not it Okay, in the sinning because condemned himself. But anyways, people that are stuck in their ways, they got a form of godliness, folks, but they're denying the power that's going to change them. They don't want this power. What is the power that's going to change them? It's the true knowledge of God. You can read this Bible all day long, folks, and it's not going to mean nothing to you until the Holy Ghost liberally anoints it and gives you that understanding that God's got. I'm telling you. How do you think these fellows wrote all this? Because the Holy Spirit inspired them to give them the understanding that God gave them. That's what happened in the garden. To get true knowledge from God, you must know the Holy Ghost. He gives you the understanding. He's the great teacher. Come on, guys. He gives you understanding. He gives you revelation. He gives you things that man could not even show you. He leads you into all truth. What's the Bible say? Let no man teach you but be taught by the Holy Ghost. He gives you truth if you seek it. You ain't going to seek it. He ain't going to give you no truth. I said, God, you show me the truth. I'm tired of man's doctrines. The doctrines of devils. That's all men are going after now, the doctrines of devils. You want to teach somebody to be unruly in their home when God's all about obedience. That's why they can't be obedient with their tithes. That's why they can't be obedient with their money. God speaks to them. They don't listen. They don't, they don't do what God tells them to do because they hadn't been taught as a child. Listen, you got to obey. I walked outside a while ago. My dog got out of the fence. He took off running. I said, oh, Lord, I'm going to have to chase him all day. I looked at him. I said, boy, get back in that fence. He run back in this fence. And See what I'm saying? He's learning authority. And when he learns authority, he's going to get the blessings of the Lord. See what I'm saying? But a parent that does not discipline their child, they don't love them. Sorry. I'm going to teach that to the day I die. I'm going to preach that to the day I die. Why? Because I know God loves order. He created Adam first and then Eve. Yes, yeah, Shaka. You, you know what? You know what's wrong with America? Is it, all these homes are out of order. It's hard to run the church because the home's out of order. That's why God's got me a home now, to get it in order. Hey, hey. These women going around with these Jezebel spirits running their homes. Come on, you need to get under subjection somewhere. It's not your ability to lead it's your ability to follow because how do you think jesus got here why didn't he choose a man come on i'm fixing to give you a nugget here why didn't god choose a man to deliver his son and guys why I yell you know why i want to yell i'm going to explain to you why i yell because i feel the anointing come on me and it's it's a boldness out of this world a boldness He said the righteous is bold as the lion. The lion don't keep, he don't go meow. He goes, Rrr. come on. But see, God is all about discipline. He's all about order. And when we don't expect respect order, that's why you can't stay up under a ministry because you don't respect order. 
David E. Taylor is my father in the Lord. He told me something the other day. I listened and obeyed. I didn't argue with it. Well, I don't need you. Which I did get in debate with the guy because I was trying to tell him I was already doing that. I did get in debate with him, but I didn't argue with him because I was, I was explaining to him I already was doing what David was telling me to do. I was already doing what David has told me to do. He's my spiritual father. He watches over my soul, guys. I have one too. Because God loves order. Talk about you up under a ministry and you barely do talk to the person you're up under. <laughs> oh, my Lord. We got to do some praying. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. That's all I have for you guys today. I'm going to go into some commercials here. Uh, I'll be back we in just a minute, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. We love you in the Lord. We appreciate you. And you know what? You are number one on God's chart. You're number one. Here we go, guys. You're listening to The Kingdom Radio Podcast. If you would like to give, you can do so at www.thekingdomradio.com forward slash give now. Thank you and God bless you for listening to The Kingdom Radio Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Kingdom Radio Podcast. You can also visit Touch of the South Pearls and Treasures. That is Touch of the South Pearls and Treasures. You can find them on Facebook.com forward slash Touch of the South. Or you can go to their website at www.touchofthesouthpearlsandtreasures.com. They carry clothing, the cosmetics, oysters opening, game prizes, designer purses, boutique items, fellowship and fun, and jewelry. They carry all sort of sort of stuff. The owners are Mel and Granny. Go visit them now on Facebook Live. Facebook.com forward slash touch of the south. Okay, guys, yeah, go on over there to them. They have some good stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Guys, get in your seed this month. We got some things coming up this month. Get your seed in. A lot of you ain't obeying God in your seed. Come on, guys, you got to listen. We got to learn obedience. Obedience. No, I'm not begging for you money. No, I'm not, because God is going to do what God's going to do. I just want you blessed this season, so get your seed in. I'm not begging for your money. I don't care. I don't care. Listen, I do care if you give because I want to see you blessed and I want to see God unlock some things in your door. And the only reason he does this is because he wants you to obey. He wants you to be obedient. Okay? I love you in the Lord. You guys have a good week. Okay? Love y'all. And remember, Jesus is Lord.